Okay, so if you watched my unboxing video, you saw this. Um, this is a soap dispenser mold. Um, this is the bottom of the dispenser itself. This is where the top is. This is where the soap would go. Supposedly, this holds about six ounces. Not huge, not tiny. And then it has a top piece that I will glue on separately. And then the pumps go in there. So I ordered this from Amazon. I will put the link down below. Um, but today I am just going to get this poured. So I have my resin sitting here. I don't know how much it's going to take. I did not measure it, so take it as you will. Um, but I'm going to use some alcohol ink on this one. Um, just mixed in. I'm not going to do any blooms or anything. So I'm going to get that mixed in. That'll help eliminate the bubbles in this one. And this I'm going to use for part of it and for the lid. Because I kind of want the lid to match the top. But And I know my next part's going to sink in, but I don't have time to let this really harden. Um, so it's actually going to kind of end up probably upside down of what I originally intended. But I still think it'll look pretty cute, so we'll see. Break that stick in half. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour the lid first. because you're going to want the lid filled to the very top and flat. But you don't want to overdo this part where the pump goes through. So I'm just kind of getting down to level. And this is kind of raggedy. I probably could have cleaned that up a little bit. But hopefully it'll be okay. I knew there was a chunk in there. My big mixing cup had a piece of dried resin in it and I just dropped it into my mold. I saw it when I was mixing and then I lost track of it. So I'm just going to fish that back out. Okay. No worries. So I kind of want to go I kind of wanted this a little more than halfway, but maybe not as heavily pigmented. So I'm actually just going to pour some clear in and let it mix until I get to about the level I want it to be at. So I'm going to just mix it a little bit, even though it's already in the mold. Let's also make sure I'm getting down in those corners and edges. And I'm going to go ahead and let that sit for a little bit, let some of these bubbles rise to the top. And then come back in for my next step, how I want the base to be. I actually think I want a little bit more than that, though. I don't think I want the base as thick. So, I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. I'm going to work on something else, and I will be back. Okay, so... This has been sitting a few minutes. It's not hard by any means. I don't have time to sit here and wait for it to get hard. So I have some more resin and I have these glass chips. Um, these are, I believe, from Michael's. They're decorative vase filler, but um, they're small enough. They work great for resin products. These ones are lavender. Um, so I'm going to pour quite a few of these into the resin. And I'm 
around. I'm going to mix them in. Now, because this isn't cured, these are going to sink to what will be the top of the bottle. Like I said, it's not the ultimate, but I don't really want to waste the resin I have here ready to go. So, and I did just introduce quite a few bubbles doing that because like glitter, the glass will hold some air as you mix it. But hopefully they'll work their way back to the surface after I pour. Um, if you don't have the color glass you want, like I just happen to have a lavender, my mom gave me three of these in my stocking, um, you can color the glass with alcohol ink. So, I'm actually going to pour this right onto the center and hopefully some of it will hold at the top there. That'll still leave me at least some at this end of the jar. I don't know why I'm using this little baby coffee stir stick. I really should have grabbed an actual popsicle stick for this part, but I did not. And that created a ton of bubbles, so. So I will have to babysit this for a bit. But nothing new there. And I do need a little bit more resin, which I do happen to have mixed, so. I'm just going to scrape some in. So I actually mixed up 800 mLs of resin. I did this mold, I poured another feather, and then I poured the two jar molds also. So, um, I'll have to get the measurements for each one exactly, but um, as you can see, I am pretty much dead on for what I plan to do tonight. Like, that's it, I'm out. I'm going to wipe this down a little bit, just so there's no glass in the flash, if I have any flash. And I'm going to watch it for bubbles. I feel like I should have sprinkled a couple pieces of glass in there, and I might, but I'm going to take this glove off first. Just now that I know how much of it went that way, they should sink in. Because this is a long ways from cured. Just to give this a little bit of texture as well. So it doesn't look plain compared to the jar itself. I'm just gonna poke them down with the stick a minute. Okay, and I have a ton of bubbles rising, which is good. That's what I want. I'm gonna grab a mini mister. This one is empty. Um, I just fill them with 91% alcohol. Having your resin warm to begin with and um, having a warm space and actually letting your resin rest for a little bit after you mix it will help prevent bubbles. 
but you can see there's a lot of suspended bubbles in here. Not much I can do about that at this point. Um, I'm just going to have to go with it and watch them until it's time for me to leave the house for work and catch the ones I can as they rise to the surface. So I will come back tomorrow and demold this and we'll see as a product how it looks regardless of whether this one was just for play really. Um, I'll keep it here at my house and use it for something. Um, just to test the mold itself to see how the mold goes together. But rather than do, you know, um, just a plain pour. So, again, I will be back tomorrow to unmold this. I'm going to close this up before I spill them everywhere. And we will see what we have. And again, I will watch this every 5-10 minutes. I will come in and spritz it with alcohol until it's time for me to leave. Just to get as many bubbles as I can out. And so my bottom isn't completely bubbled over tomorrow. Because that will happen if they keep rising as it cures. Eventually a layer of bubbles will be there permanently. So I will be back to unmold this tomorrow. Okay, so I'm going to unmold this, but um, hopefully it'll come out. I do notice right off the bat before I unmold it that it is sort of bulging on the sides. Um, just because there was so much resin in here. But I use my regular resin in here. Some molds it'll work, some molds it won't. I took a gamble. Um, cause I don't actually have any deep cast in stock right now. Um, I'm going to pour another one, but I'm going to do it in two steps because you can see all these bubbles on the top. Um, I walked away for about 10 minutes and because of the volume of this mold, it flash cured. So hopefully it is not fused to the mold in any way. I also got these odd little dips around the edge, but, um, so I'm going to pour another one using a similar concept, but I'm going to do like half and half. So hopefully that will help with the issue, but so the top's not fused and I suspect if it was going to fuse, it would have fused around the top edge. So that's good. So I'm going to take the lid off first. perfect. That actually looks really good. Um, I do have a little bit of flash, but that's okay. So in theory, this will screw on here and it actually works really well. So yay. Um, but let's see if we can get this out. This is one of those bigger molds that can be a pain in the butt. And hopefully I don't wreck a, you know, $18 mold on the first use. So, there's the outside off. I'm going to kind of gently twist. Yay. All right. So, I'm just trying to get my mold turned back the right way. Beautiful. That actually wasn't too bad. Um, so, it is quite bubbly. Um, I can sand the bottom down and smooth that back off. It's not a big deal. Yes, there's a lot of bubbles in it, but again, this was just the test piece that was going to stay with me. So, um, what I'm going to do is mix up some resin in a little bit here. And it did say in the directions that this straw was too long to just trim it, which it is. So, 
good to know. Um, but I'm going to clean up this edge with my X-Acto knife real quick, just so it's flat. And when I get some resin mixed up here in a little bit, I'm going to use resin to attach this. And I'll just let it cure in place. I think that'll give me my best seal. Um, I don't really want to use glue. I think I want to stick to resin. So, I will come back when I am ready to do that. In a little bit here. Okay, so I am ready to get the top tacked down to this and be done with this one. I'm just grabbing a pair of gloves because I am going to use regular resin for this. Now, um, I'm just kind of looking at it to see. I've just got like a tiny little lip around it. So, I'm just going to, and I'm using KS Resin Liquidy Split for my adhesive on this. I'm just going to do a fairly thin run around the edge. I'm out of frame. I'm further away than I normally work. And probably some of this will push out when I put it down. I'm just hoping that none of it drips down into the soap dispenser itself because once this is on there, I won't be getting that off. So I'm going to flip it back over and just put it down. Make sure it's semi lined up. And I am going to tape it down in a second here. But that's it. That's the finished product. I think it's adorable. Um, again, this one's less than perfect. This one's just going to stay at my house. But um, so I'm going to. I'm just going to tape it on two sides just so it doesn't slip slide around on me. I'm just going to double check my placement. And because this is liquidy split, I'll be able to take that off in about two hours and it'll be absolutely perfect. So there you go. Soap dispenser number one. Uh, hopefully soap dispenser number two, which is going to hopefully go better, will be up tomorrow. Thanks for watching.